Hello, hello, this is Joe from Nerd in Korea. We are looking at our uh, Duskmorn set review, and this time we're doing the top five value cards in this set. So hopefully, I'm going to do the fat pack opening in a bit. I'm hoping it arrives soon. It's supposed to come today. Well, I'm, I'm always nervous. I think that it's going to like randomly take a bunch of extra time. It's raining, so I hope that doesn't hurt uh, the shipping time. So again, top five value cards. We're looking at top five value cards in the set, and we're using MTG Goldfish uh, as the price reference. Mostly because it is so much easier. If you're looking at a whole set, MTG Goldfish is very good for that. I usually use a TCG player, but um, they're kind of a nightmare if you're trying to look at a whole bunch of cards. Um, it shows each card individually, which is not good for that. Anyway, oh, not a sponsor, before I forget. Please hit like and subscribe, it helps so, so much, it does. So, Screaming Nemesis, I love the art on this one, for one thing. Uh, two and a red for a 3-3 three, three, uh, spirit with haste. Um, and whenever it is dealt damage, it deals that much damage to any other target. Damage reflection, very nice. If a player is dealt damage this way, they can't gain life for the rest of the game. Okay, so yeah, this is a counter to life gain, right? Any kind of life gain deck, if you have a red deck where you're in any kind of red burn, or really just focused on damage at all, you probably want to have something that does this. This is amazing because you've got, you've got you know, the Tibble, or whatever his name is, uh, planeswalker that can prevent from gaining life until he gets removed from the battlefield and then just back to normal. Um, this is just turning it off for the rest of the game. Even if they take one damage once, no more life gain for the rest of the game. Just turn it off. Um, that's crazy good. Uh, uh, anyway, yeah, this will fit into many decks. I think this is something that you can really, anything where you have red, you can put this in just as a possible counter strategy. I mean, worst case scenario, it's, uh, it's going to reflect damage. Anyway, 1486. Overlord of the Hauntwood. Okay, I have trouble figuring out what this art is. I think it's a squid, a flying squid in a tree. It also kind of looks like an elephant with goggles, but I think it's a squid. Anyway, whatever. Okay, so three green green, five CMC for a six five, eh, not bad. It has impending four, so for one green green, you may cast the spell and uh, put basically, it's suspend. It's the same thing as suspend, right? You get four time counters, and you're gonna remove one of them each turn. So, yeah. At the beginning of your end step, you remove one. So, um, I think this is uh, using the impending. It saves you two mana, and it takes four extra turns. I, I would assume it can be proliferated as well. And if it can be proliferated, then um, you might just never get it. So that sounds bad. Anyway, when Overlord of the Haunt enters or attacks, create a tapped colorless land token named everywhere. That is uh, every basic land type. So you're going to be making land tokens that can produce any mana. Just mana fixing sorted, ramp ramp every turn you just attack with them ramp um give him like indestructibility or some evasion and just done right he's just going to keep uh making those tokens i i would assume you could like populate and make copies of the to those tokens as well so that's like a, just a crazy useful ability um also if you can flicker him right he'll just keep making those tokens every time he re-enters the battlefield um so useful in so many ways. I feel like green is somewhat lacking in really good flicker targets, so this is kind of nice for that. It's almost overpowered though. It's $14.99 right now. If this doesn't go up, then I just don't understand anything about magic prices. But anyway, I think it has to go up. That's just way too useful. If it drops and I don't get it, I, if it goes under 10 bucks, I'm gonna buy like three of them. Roller Crusher Ride. 
So X2 in a red. It has Delirium. So if a sorcerer you control would deal non-combat damage to a permanent or player, while there are four more card types among cards in your graveyard, it deals double that damage instead. I really like this, and I like that it has those limitations built into it. So you need to get the card types into your graveyard. Uh, something this set is actually pretty good at doing. Um, and remember, there are, I believe, seven card types all together. So um, you can probably uh, do that fairly easily. I mean, getting creatures in the graveyard is easy. Sorcery instant, no problem, right? After that, you might want to look at like an artifact you can sacrifice to get some value out of and get your artifact in there. Um, also, just like there's even getting like planeswalkers isn't too hard into your graveyard. That would be already five, so yeah. Um, enchantments, uh, well, maybe. Anyway, okay. I'm just rambling at this point. So 1764, sorry, I should read the second half. When it enters, it deals X damage to e up to X target creatures. So the X in there is doing damage and it's the number of targets. So even if you cast this for six, it's going to do three damage to three targets. And uh, it just, yeah, target creatures. It does have to be a creature, but that's a lot of removal you can add on to this, right? Especially if you've got something like Everflowing Chalice, where you can just keep kind of boosting up, up how much mana it creates, you're going to uh, be able to do some pretty significant damage pretty quickly. Yeah, as I said, 1764 for this one. Valgavoth? Valgavoth. Terror Eater. Looks very terror uh, terror -y. Anyway, 6 and black, black, black. So 9 CMC. Yoi. It's a 9-9 nine, nine flying lifelink. Okay, so that's getting better. Still, 9 casting cost is... Yay. Ward, sacrifice 3 non-land permanents. Okay, so anyone that wants to cast a spell on this or anything, they're going to have to do the ward. Again, there's a lot of ways around ward, but it's better than nothing. Um, but sacrifice 3 non-land permanents to be able to cast a spell on this, um, that's pretty good. That is, uh, as word goes, I think it's pretty, uh, pretty, uh, solid. So if a card you didn't control be put into an opponent's, oh, sorry. If a card you didn't control would be put into an opponent's graveyard from anywhere, exile it instead. So this exiles just not only creatures, just any card that's going into your opponent's graveyard, um, that's a really good start. During your turn, you may play cards exiled with Valgaroth. If you do uh, cast a spell this way, pay life equal to its mana value rather than its mana cost. So you're going to take the CMC and lose that much life. So again, life gain decks, um, whether it's whatever, mono black, Orzov, or whatever, um, excuse me, that is just kind of all the spells in the game become your spells, right? Uh, this is not limited to creatures or anything. Most similar effects will specify like creatures get exiled and you can recast them. This is just everything. Um, this is a really definitely a centerpiece kind of card. Not a great commander because of the casting cost though, but um, can do a lot of work. Uh, 2139. Meat Hook Massacre 2, because the first one, I guess, called for a follow-up. Um, so XX, black, 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 uh, 4 and double X casting cost. So the casting cost is something they fixed. I think Meat Hook Massacre, they went, oh, that was a little OP. Maybe we should uh, try to balance that out. I, so this is probably how they're doing that. So when it enters, each player sacrifices X creature. So again, that XX, so for each two extra you pay, each player, including you, sacrifices one creature. Whenever a creature you control dies, you may pay three. If you do, return that creature to uh, your control with a finality counter on. Again, finality counter means that if it dies, it goes into exile, it doesn't go to the graveyard. Um, so, kind of a, well, if you're sacrificing your own stuff, maybe that's not great, but 
even this is automatic recursion for three life. I think it's worth it. Even better though, whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, they may pay three life. If they don't, again, if they don't, return that creature card to your the uh, uh, to the battlefield under your control with a finality counter on. So anytime anyone else's creature dies, unless they pay three life, you're getting it with a finality counter, sure, but. Basically, if there's a board wipe, you're uh, not getting you're getting like the exact opposite of board wipes. So, um, board wipes are your friend all of a sudden. Um, really, kind of a crazy ability. Even if you cast it just for the four black, I think it would still be worthwhile as an enchantment. Um, anything past that is kind of just like extra awesomeness. It's not hard for you to get around as well. You know, you can sacrifice tokens or something. Black is very good at that, and this has a very Orzhov aristocrat kind of feel to it. So I think you'll have lots of tokens you can sacrifice and not really worry about. It. Anyway, 2441. This has been the top value cards for Duskmorn. Um, I'm really looking forward to this set. I kind of like the horror genre theme that they went with on this one. So anyway, take it easy.